This teaching especially affected a young preacher. He just got out of Bible college, studied to be a pastor of a church. His name was Charles Darwin. Anybody ever heard of Charles Darwin? Charles Darwin graduated from Bible college to be a preacher, and he's going to sail around the world for five years first and collect some bugs for some, you know, bugologist back there in England. Charlie brought some books with him. He brought his Bible, of course. He just got out of Bible college. And he brought this brand new book, Principles of Geology. Charlie said that book changed his life forever. He later wrote to a friend and said, Disbelief crept over me slowly. I felt no distress. He slowly lost his faith in the Bible. As Darwin sailed around the world, he stopped off at the Galapagos Islands. Here on those islands, he noticed there were 14 different varieties of finches. Little tiny bird with a little tiny beak. But the beak shapes were different. Now the Grants went there and studied them and said, Wow, during dry years the beak is a tenth of a millimeter thicker, and during wet years it's a tenth of a millimeter thinner. But it always averages back out. A tenth of a millimeter, do you know how much that is? Not much. Darwin looked at the birds and said, You know what? I think all these birds had a common ancestor. I bet you're right, Charlie. It was a bird. <laughs> and then Charlie said, well, maybe this proves that birds and bananas are related. You say, oh, he never said that. Uh, he sure did. I knew you wouldn't believe me, so I brought his book. It's right here. Principles, I'm sorry, uh, The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. On page 170, Darwin said, it's a truly wonderful fact that all animals and all plants throughout all time and space should be related to each other. Isn't he saying the birds and bananas are related? He sure is. This is a lie. What Charlie observed is what is sometimes called microevolution. Microevolution tells us dogs produce a variety of dogs. That's a fact. It happens, okay? And roses produce a variety of roses. Nobody argues about that. The question is, does it go any farther than that? You may get a big dog or a little dog, but you get a dog every time. And probably the dog, the wolf, and the coyote had a common ancestor. I wouldn't argue about that. We did the test this morning. Had a five-year-old girl. Said, okay, here we have a dog, a wolf, a coyote, and a banana. Which one is not like the others? She got it. The banana. We got college professors can't figure that out. Here's National Pornographic uh, Geographic. says, uh, the evolution of dogs from wolves. Well, duh. Nobody's arguing about that. Yeah, dogs came from wolves, okay? The Bible says they bring forth after their kind. Ten times it says that in the first chapter. See, this word evolution has six meanings. We've been through this before, so I'm going to go through it kind of quickly. There's first of all cosmic evolution, Big Bang. Secondly, chemical evolution, where all the chemicals come from hydrogen. That's baloney. Thirdly, stellar evolution, where all the stars form from dust. You cannot get dust to condense into a solid star. Can't happen. There's Boyle's gas laws that drive it away, okay? Then there's enough stars out there, though we can all have 11 trillion to ourselves. Then you have organic evolution, where life gets started from non-living material. And then macroevolution, where an animal changes to a different kind of animal. None of those have ever been observed. Number six, variations within the kinds, sometimes called microevolution. That one happens. The first five are religious. So whenever you discuss evolution, you have to define what you're talking about. If you're talking about number six, I'm with you. I agree that happens. If you're talking about the first five, that doesn't happen. That's something you believe happens, okay? Watch how they change the definition for the kids. They say, okay, boys and girls, evolution is change over time. Uh, is that really what they mean? Watch this carefully now. In other words, living things have changed over time. Wait, wait, wait. Are you going to skip over the first four? They just want to bypass the first four stages like it's not part of the theory? Well, then you don't have a coherent theory. Then they say, evolution is defined as a change in species over time. Now they're down to what I believe in. I think species can change. I think you can get some really weird varieties of animals, but they're still the same kind, okay? This is a lie, kids. That's not really what they mean by evolution. They want to give you examples of number six and make you believe that the whole theory has been proven. Don't get brainwashed. Most evolutionists will say, well, macroevolution is just micro with longer periods of time. No, it's not. They had a big conference on this very question in Chicago. They said the central question of the Chicago conference was whether the mechanisms underlying microevolution can be extrapolated to explain the phenomena of macroevolution. The answer can be given as a clear no. It doesn't work. 
Variations happen, sure, but they have limits. But you know, farmers have been trying to get bigger pigs for a long time. You think they'll ever get a pig as big as Texas? Nah, I bet there's a limit in there, okay? Roaches become resistant to pesticides. Do you think they'll ever become resistant to a sledgehammer? <laughs> Probably not. See? There's a tiger had three kittens, all different colors, same litter. That's variations, but it's still a tiger. That's not evolution. They always end up producing the same kind of offspring, just like the Bible says. The information for the new variety had to be in the in gene code already or it couldn't produce it. No new information is ever added. The gene pool of the new variety is always more limited. Somebody spent years crossbreeding dogs to develop the Chihuahua. All that money to make a dog that's 100% useless. I mean, think about it. How long would the Chihuahuas last in the real world? Turn them all loose into the woods. Watch what happens. They'd run up to the wolf. Yep, 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 yep. Crunch. <laughs> End of gene code, right? <laughs> Genetic information is lost, not added, when you get a strange variety. Real evolution would need an increase in genetic complexity. We don't ever observe that. Now, I grew up in Illinois, corn country. Did you know there are so many kinds of corn up there, they have to number them? You'd be driving down the highway and there's a sign that says BX65, don't mix it with XL29, something will explode. <laughs> but folks, you can crossbreed corn from now till the cows come home and you are always going to get corn. You're never going to get a hamster or a tomato or a whale to grow on your corn stalk. It just ain't going to happen, okay? There's a whole variety of dogs in the world and they might have had a common ancestor, a dog. There's BBC News. It looks like 95% of current dogs came from just three original founding females. Hey, they're getting closer. Right here it says, Today's dogs come in all shapes and sizes, but scientists believe they evolved from just a handful of wolves tamed by humans living in or near China less than 15,000 years ago. <laughs> they're getting closer. Man, if they keep studying their Bible, keep studying the science, they're going to be an independent Baptist when they're done. <laughs> you get done climbing the mountain of truth, that's where you end up, you know. Okay. This Irish textbook calls them divergent evolution. Oh, come on. They show five dogs around a wolf. and That's not divergent evolution. Don't give it a fancy name. It's still a dog. <laughs> it's just a variety of dog. This Mexican textbook says, the horse and the zebra had a common ancestor. I agree. It looked like a horse. You know, four-wheel drive, genuine leather upholstery, all the standard horse equipment, okay? They got little tiny horses today. We had the world's smallest horse come visit our dinosaur adventure land. Talk about useless. I mean, you know, you can't ride it. Well, my granddaughter could, but uh, it won't bark, you know. What do you do with a horse like that? Uh, you know, horses, zebras, and asses can all be crossbred. They have competition in California. Who can get the weirdest animal? They get zorses, zonkeys, zeonies, zedonks, zebras, and shebras. Here's a zebra who forgot to put his PJs on. <laughs> Here's a herd of zebroids running around. You know, in the last 100 years, the Kentucky Derby has gone from an average winning speed of 127 seconds down to 123 seconds. Now, even in the old days, they had some pretty low times turned in, okay? Question, how much money would you guess has been spent on selective breeding trying to get the fastest horse for the Kentucky Derby? Millions and millions of dollars. They do the same thing right around here, don't they? Spend lots of money for a Tennessee walker. What's the most expensive Tennessee walking horse that you've ever heard of? A million dollars for one horse? Three million for one horse. That's how much per pound? <laughs> Man, I was in Italy. We ate horse over there. It was good, too. Tastes like chicken, you know. Uh, 